Hi, this is Stephanie Miller from The Stephanie Miller Show. Please enjoy this exclusive clip from my show on Political Voices Network. Carl, explain everything to us. <laughs> You're a school board member, for God's sakes. Well, like I'm an idiot. First, you need two eggs. You need uh, flour. Uh-huh. You need butter. Okay. You need chocolate chips and a nail file. I think you, what you were asking is what cake do you send Peter Navarro? That was what I asked. Yes. You asked if I was going to visit him. I said, yes, I'm going to bring a lot of uh, pre uh, shirt sleeve rolled up shirts to him just in case he needs extras. A lot of packages. With, with the sleeves pre rolled because I'm a liberal helper. Yeah. <laughs> What's his prison job? Green Bay sweeping, do you think? Do you think he's on. Clean I'm more up, interested in what his proof? prison nickname is. What's that? What is his prison nickname? Uh, I think that is the question. Oh, let's ask uh, Tony Bubbles. How you doing? <laughs> Carl, you and I have been talking politics a long time. You've been doing politics yes. a long time. Have you ever seen anything like whatever that was <laughs> yesterday? I don't even understand it politically. Why do they keep having interv- uh, uh, in, excuse me, hearings where... Either the witness says exactly the opposite of what they say he was going to say, or he implicates them. I. And it, it, it's as if um, all of the Republican hearing prep is done by chat GPT without, yes. a, without a connection to the Internet. <laughs> sorry. It makes absolutely that, no sense. That tickled me. Failing themselves. And the only thing that can speak to why it happens over and over and over again is somewhere in the back in the office there are these two you know bros giving each other high fives about how great it's going not <laughs> cognizant of the fact that it's a sinking ship yeah i okay and chris asked because i guess you know even he doesn't marinate in this <laughs> like you well, know this is a but, story that's been on the sideline well, for me but you were saying like yeah. oh they didn't know did you say you didn't you know lev parnas is going to flip no, no, he already's done that. He's been out talking, doing interviews on Twitter. Like they had to know what he was going to say. I, I, I don't, I don't understand it. Other than they, they think they were going to get him in a gotcha moment or something. I, I don't know. I let's listen. I just I okay. Hear I think Carl. the problem that they run into is that in order to get somebody in a gotcha moment, you have to be in reality. Right. Yeah. And so if you don't start from a premise of reality, you can't get somebody in a gotcha moment. Yeah. Here's, let's listen to more. Here he is. From November 2018 to October 2019, I was a key participant and a witness to numerous efforts to prove that Joe and Hunter Biden were linked to corruption in Ukraine. Rudy Giuliani, on behalf of then President Donald Trump, tasked me with a mission to travel the globe, finding dirt on the Bidens so that an array of networks could spread misinformation about them, thus securing the 2020 election for Donald J. Trump. <laughs> Just... He named names, Carl. I mean, I, 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 okay. I, I guess we'll find out like what, cause there's a lot, once again, I know we're in the middle of four other trials, Carl, but was that not a bunch of, I, you know, criminal information <laughs> about? Yes. Yes. Go yes. ahead. Well, and you know, it makes you wonder if like they do a hearing about Georgia, are they going to be like, we have now brought it forward a witness, the person who pressed the record button to record <laughs> Donald Trump's phone calls. Right. And then they just ask the guy what happened, and he's like, well, I press record, and I'm going to play the recordings. By the and way, they, like, so this, this news about uh, Judge McAfee, uh, first of all, it's not an appeal. It's, it's a review is what he agreed to, which is kind of achieves the same delay. But um, Cindy tweets, Norm Eisen said the judge didn't grant a stay, so the case goes on while the appeal does. Uh, according to him, he said he doesn't think it will change anything. So, you know, it broke right at the end of the show, and we're always like, oh, my God, what does this mean, and blah, blah, blah. Um, I mean, I there are things like we've never heard of before legally going on, aren't there, that we're just like, what, how does, is that legal? How does he get away with this? What, what is this going to do now? Um, what, what is your take on what happened in uh, specifically the Georgia thing yesterday? I mean, I assume based on what I've seen that that's exactly how things are happening, that they'll proceed while the appeal's happening. Um, you know, that is one of the cases where they've got the audio. So I don't think that there's a lot of wiggle room for, um, Trump in that regard. Um, You know, I I think we've always known that that case was going to take a little, perhaps a little longer because it's so broad in terms of who it's focused on. It's not just about Trump. Um, So we shall see, but I don't see any reason based on the analysis I've seen that things should be slowed down. 
Yeah, I well, let's uh, yeah. Let me just review this. So this is Judge Wright McAfee granted a request uh, seeking permission to ask the Georgia Court of Appeals to review the judge's decision. It will be up to an appeals court to decide whether to hear it. I, <clears throat> am I the only one that just have always thought this is a load of crap that they have proved absolutely no conflict of interest with Fonnie Willis and it, you know has nothing to do with Trump's uh, no, as going, you say recorded criminality yeah. in this case. They're going to take every opportunity they can to delay, 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 particularly in this one, because remember, this is one where if he is convicted, there is no federal pardon available to him. There is no state pardon available to him. And I believe it's either three or five years that he would have to serve in prison before he'd be eligible for the clemency board to even consider his case. Yeah. Um, so let's talk about uh, New York. Uh, the prospect that Trump may fail to post the bond by Monday's deadline uh, he uh, has frustrated uh, Trump and some members of his inner circle, which is just uh, for just another layer of fun for us to right, me. Right. It's like it's like legal legal dip, dip and dots. Have you ever had dip and dots? Oh, they're fun. Yes, <laughs> they're the it's ice like, cream of the ice future. Cre- yes, ice cream confetti. Yeah. Okay. Um, Trump's defense team is gaming out its options, reportedly including ways Trump could appeal in Gorin's ruling without having to put the bond up. What would happen if they can't secure the required uh, sum? Um, the, yeah, I was mentioning the uh, uh, in, racist because it's of course because it's him. The uh, the head the, head, uh, the headlining of the um, what do you call it? Emergency fundraising appeal right. was keep your filthy hands off Trump t- Tower. Insane radical Democrat AG Letitia James wants to seize my properties in New York. This includes the iconic Trump Tower. In the call for donations, um, Steve Bannon said she's not that dumb of the possibility that uh, she would uh, seize his assets. Oh, I think she's exactly that smart. <laughs> I don't know what. I think he's like, oh, it'll supercharge his base. Who cares? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, what you think Letitia G- James gives a flying F? You, you how, how can you supercharge them anymore, right? Yeah, and also, um, what is left of his base? I mean, look at the polling that came out in the last few days where 20% of Republicans still won't vote for him. Yeah, That's a huge problem for him. And this stuff does not make it more likely that they will vote for him. Um, these people don't think he's fit to be president, nor should he be the Republican nominee. They're not likely to uh, come to the defense of a guy who is flailing around like this. Uh, but this all stems from him thinking tax, you know, the tax laws didn't apply to him in the first place. Yeah. Uh, and now the penalties he doesn't want to apply to him in the first place. So, um, you know, he's now claiming that he wants to use that they're trying to take away his money so that he can't use it to run for president. Uh, I don't believe he spent anything of his own money in 2020. No, never. And he, spent, and he spent very little of his own money in 2016 compared to what he spent overall. And they're all so, whining about know, the size of the of the penalty. It's like, well, that's the amount of his fraud. Of <laughs> that's, right. that's that's what happens when you run a lifetime tab of fraud. You know, I mean, that's right. what the, I mean, ta- the New York taxpayers the, are owed. The penalty is based on how much he stole from taxpayers. Thank you. Um, and the interest while the appeal happens yeah. there's no like extra punitive fines on here carl to your point about him underperforming in the primaries do you agree? i don't know if you heard our opening segment but do you agree with my point that i think the reason so far he hasn't gotten the money is a lot of people don't think he's gonna win for all the the bluster over there i think a lot of you know wealthy billionaire be it jared or you know, elon musk all these people, like, who's the one on TV? That Oh, Larry Kudlow yeah. tried to get someone on TV from Shark Tank to yeah. agree, and he's like, yeah, mm, no. <laughs> I mean, I don't think that, if they, if they really thought, oh, this is, he's going to win, that'd be a great bet. That's a great, uh, you know, that's a great investment for some billionaire, foreign or domestic, to get a, a United States know, president. It, well, certainly it's, um, it's not a good investment with the money, period, because... Right. These people have to look at the totality of Donald Trump's career, right? Donald Trump's career is taking money from people and not paying it back. No. Yeah. And so um, what is likely to happen in this case is that he's not going to win the appeal. So they'd be out money, and, you know, or, you know, he'd have to come up with it and he doesn't come up with money. Um, so I don't think that there's anything for them to gain on this. I do think I've heard some people speculate that um, probably at the 11th hour, um, somebody will come through for him and it'll be shady and we won't quite understand for a while where the money's coming from exactly. Um, but who knows? I mean, he may think that there's more of a political advantage to 
uh, having to, you know, sell some property or something. But, um, you know, uh, I don't remember the exact figures that we saw in, in the corrected tax information. Yeah. But I think you'd have to sell quite a bit of real yeah. estate. Yeah, we were we were saying all the monopoly pieces. Yeah, does Trump Tower not enough? Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, Lawrence Tribe said Trump's request to be freed of the required bond pending appeal lacks any legal basis. He should be forced to post the four hundred sixty four million dollar bond or suffer imme immediate execution of the full judgment appeal or no appeal. He's gotten away with financial murder for way too long now. Enough already. Um, I agreed and agreed. Um, so let's talk about voting for a minute. Uh, Bella's Mike says protest voting against Joe Biden and Democrats won't punish them. It will punish everyone in this country under Christo fascist dictator named Donald Trump. Protest voting against Hillary Clinton in 2016 gave us Trump. We can't be that stupid again in 2024. I mean, the only thing that chilled me, I, I, I can't remember who it was, Joe, Joe Trippi, maybe somebody went through what would happen if a third party anything made it so that nobody gets to 270 that then it oh my god it's contested and goes into congress and i'm like oh god no right well you know and and you know remember i don't believe it's like a straight up uh, or down vote of congress i believe it's based on the majority party in each state um and so it's a little convoluted and i think you know people may look at it and think well how hard would it be to get one or two republicans to do the right thing a, it would be very hard. Yeah. Uh, but B, it wouldn't come down like that. It would be based on the majority party in each congressional delegation. And in that regard, I don't think we would fare well. Speaking of Christo fascism, so is it Alabama that just passed a don't say gay law? Carl, can you explain to people what these laws actually mean and how it impacts, say, teachers in the, in the you know, I, I don't know if you've seen, my sister sent me the North Carolina school board lady, the crazy pants homeschooling advocate <laughs> that would be a superintendent of schools that's called for the execution of Obama and, and yeah. to get Biden, Biden, you know who I'm talking about. Anyway, <laughs> just your thoughts on I, what this means for school boards, for teachers. Well, let's let's talk about what it first what it means about for kids. Um, you know, I think every school board um, and every educator should be creating an inclusive environment where kids can show up can show up every day to school and be able to focus exclusively on what they're there for, which is learning, right? Without the baggage of other people's uh, hate and garbage uh, on their shoulders. And so um, penalizing teachers for offering that inclusive environment or schools or administrators um, sends a chilling message, not only um, you know, striking fear into teachers who are already disrespected and underpaid, uh, that their jobs are in jeopardy if they do the right thing. Um, but it also sends a message to kids that they are not welcome uh, in the school environment, that they will not be protected. And in states where they have passed legislation that makes it harder for LGBTQ students to exist, bullying has gone through the roof. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, all right. Yes, anti-bullying. That's what 2024 is about, yeah. anti-fascism. Um, Carl, we love you, you adorable little scamp. <laughs>